All right, so once we have this hold, you don't want to be going around holding your bow like this all the time, okay? It's not necessary. It's not necessary. We don't ever really ever do that, actually. You're not holding your bow with this hand. You're, as I said, again, you're balancing your, your bow with this hand. So what do I mean by that? What do I mean? By, well, we need then the violin, actually. The violin is going to be up like this. We're going to talk about how to hold the, the violin again and talk more in detail about that. But if you notice, I'm holding my bow this way. All right, so I'm going to need my violin. Hold on, hold on. All right, go. I'm going to need my violin then to show you what I mean by this. Don't hold the bow. Don't grip the bow. You're balancing the bow just like this. Your violin is being levitated. And, and we'll talk about that and how you get your violin to be levitated. In other words, my violin is up in the air. You know, basically, I'm talking to you and it's, you know, it's still, still up in the air. It's not sagging down and I'm not holding it up with my other hand. It's stuck in there. How do I get it stuck in there? Well, that's, you know, it's only taken me about 50 years to figure that out. But uh, the bow is not really being held. Get that out of your mind. You want it to be just balanced. And look what I'm doing. I'm holding it straight up and down. I'm not going like this and waiting and then going to play. I don't do that. You're holding it like this, and then you're going to play, and you make a move this way and place the bow. Guess what? The violin is holding the bow. It is holding the bow. You see that? I'm not doing it. It's all relaxed. I'm not holding onto the bow. Well, can I play like that? Well, because I'm trying to make the bow one with the string, I just place it on there and just relax into the string while the violin is being levitated, and I pull the bow with the rest of my arm, primarily the forearm. It's a forearm stroke. So I'll be on the D string, and I'll grab the string, and then a sound comes out. And it looks natural. It's, you know, it's not that difficult. I get a nice sound from the bottom of the, the bow, the heel of the bow, the talon, to the tip of the bow, like that. All right, so I'm not holding on to the bow and trying to play like this. You know, oh, I've got to find that. Where's that string? You know, I see it, I'm holding on to my bow. That's the sound you're going to get. You're going to get a very ugly sound. You want to get rid of that sound. You want it to be a very, very direct sound, and you want it to be very, very clear. You're looking for a very clear sound. This is, this is the way to do it. This is the way to approach it, the way to think about it. That brings us then to... No. Then that brings us to what you're going to do with the rest of your arm. Once you've got this shape, you hold that shape. Just hold it like this. And start moving your forearm out and in, just like it was the hinge of a door. Now, I'm sure those of you who have played the violin before, you've heard this from your teachers ever since you were like one, one year old. And it's this movement. That is so important. Now, the problem that comes from this is when you have to combine all of these things together. This movement with this movement with this movement all together. That's a com combination of ideas that go together. Now, it gets more intense if you add the motion of the upper arm this part of your arm, right up here. And that is the circle that you describe with the upper arm. You're doing this because you're following the line of the bridge from one string to the next. You see that? This is the G string. This is the D string. This is the A string. This is the E string. You see that? You see? Now look, take a look. Take a look at what I have to do to get from string to string. But the problem always comes when you're doing this. That's fine. But you have to go to... You see what I'm doing? Right? You can see that if 
if I do do this motion in the upper arm correctly, when it's supposed to happen, exactly when it's supposed to happen, I'm going to get... I'm going to get all of that stuff. That's not clear. That is not clear at all. We have to separate out, in other words, what happens with your upper arm and what happens with your forearm. This is the forearm. This is the upper arm. Forearm, upper arm. Exercise that. Exercise that. Forearm. Now, upper arm. You're training your muscles. You're training those muscles to do what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it. Move. Move, upper arm. Do what you're supposed to. Now, forearm. Move. Move. Yes, do, do, do. Now, move. This way. This way. This way. This way. This way. You know, and do it faster and faster and faster until you have really an ease to it.